Well, hello everyone. Today we have a treat. We're going to install a brand new GE Profile built-in microwave 2.2 cubic foot, which parenthetically looks like a tabletop microwave with a specific choice of either 27 or 30 inch trim kits to go with it. But it is yet what it says it is built-in microwave. We're going to put that in a virgin cabinet. So that means there's not the opening cut big enough to take it. We're going to have to do some wood butchery and we're going to get to that just a second. But first, let me just tell you, this is geared towards someone who may not have the confidence to do this and who's never done this. I'm going to take it a little bit slower. I'm going to do some thought processing so that you can do a, a what is that with a uh, diagnose or they take apart uh, something when they're done. We're going to do an autopsy on the thought process. So there we go. The exact model of this is, if I can read it right, it's a Paul Edward Bravo 7227D as in David Lima. Bravo, Bravo. That's the microwave. It's in black. So let's get to that show right now. There's our microwave. That's the install kit. And we're going to find out pretty soon if it is damaged. And I'd recommend that you check to make sure the trim kit fits the microwave. If you've matched the right part numbers, it should. And before you would butcher a cabinet, make sure that this will fit, yours will fit, the cabinet you've got. Pay attention to the depth. Let's check which one of the models we have. We have from the microwave itself is 24 inches. The trim ring is 27. Now here we have a receptacle. It is in the cabinet. I don't know if the position is correct for this microwave. We will find out. But it's inside the cabinet and let's see what depth we have. Looks like 19 and 3 quarters. Let's see what the paperwork says. For 27 inch it says it needs to be 19 and a half or 22. And it says minimum depth with receptacle outside the cabinet, 19 and a half. We're inside the cabinet, but it's a recessed receptacle. All right. Did you catch that a little bit right there? According to the installation instructions, it does list the back of the inside of the cabinet to the front of the cabinet as being a dimension there. That's what it looks like when I'm looking at it. Now, I also noticed that we had 19 and 3 quarter or 20 and a half to the outside. Now, the question is, what does exactly that mean by inside or outside the cabinet? Now, sometimes people would drill a hole and put the receptacle above that and run a cord through there and plug it in. That's one way to do it. That would certainly be outside the cabinet. In this case, it is inside the cabinet, but is it high enough up toward that top corner to not be in that cabinet space where we could use that lower number? Because if it's high enough, it's technically inside the box, but it's above the microwave. The question is, will this be a problem for us? When we look at the instructions over here, if you download your installation instructions before you buy a, a $600 worth of microwave, you might look at what it requires, the size, the cutouts to match your cabinetry that you have. Assuming that we did that, we did notice that the little illustration had a straight plug on it. And that's fine. That's why we, we used a clock receptacle rated 15 amps so that we'd have a little bit about another inch, a little half inch, three quarter inch, some extra depth to plug that in that it wouldn't take up as much space. But guess what we found? Yes, look right here. It had a right angle plug and because of the length of the strain relief on the plug itself, we had to change out that receptacle for a standard duplex or single 
receptacle that faces toward the inside of the box. Will this be a challenge for us? You got to stay tuned and watch the rest of the installation video. Hang with us. All right, let's see if we're centered in the cabinet. Right there we have, what is that, two and a sixteenth shy of a quarter. And on the other side, let's see what we have. Oh, that looks like two and a quarter even. So we're not centered. Welcome to American Woodmark. Now we are at the edge of the opening. And it says it is 20 and three quarters. And remember when we find the center mark, we'll have to move it a little bit or allow a little bit of slop to find that uh, center is going to be off by, what is that, a, a 32nd. Now the reason we measure twice and cut once is because as I've laid out the center line, I went up here 16 and a half inches and it's actually 16 and three quarter inches. Now let's look over here. It says for our width, we have 25 and a half. Now 20, half of 25 is 12 and a half plus a quarter. That should be how much to the side of the center line we've previously marked we're going to cut. Now everything is marked, it's time to get nervous. All right, now if you watch the wall oven installation where we did essentially the same thing with the wall oven, what our concern was was getting it matched perfectly centered from the top to the bottom between the doors above and the drawers below. So we actually took our tape, went around the, the unit, went up to that halfway dimension mark from the very top to the very bottom, put a mark each side. Okay, because we want it centered in that space. Then we went to the paper and pulled the dimensions off of it to give the actual cutout above and below, which should have been the same amount. Then we brought the floor up to match it. In this case, we have something similar, except the issue is being perfectly centered side to side because that dimension that it has in, in the instructions is exactly what's between the two walls of the cabinet, which means there's not going to be any lip left or right left over. It's going to have to be a, a straight right up against that, that side of that cabinet. And that was difficult. Now, as far as being low, I actually left it with a little handsaw, there's a tiny, there was a tiny lip in the inside. I figured I could shim that. So I took a little handsaw and went left and right to the edge of the wall of the box where it gave me a little something that I could see to measure with. And then we took a jigsaw with a fairly uh, semi-fine type of tooth to it so that it didn't rip the face plate of the face surface of the cabinet, but rough enough that it wouldn't take all day to sit there. Although it took about an hour or so to nervously cut that out. That's the hardest part of this job is making sure that you get your dimensions right before you cut because there ain't no uncutting. Once you cut, that's it. All right, let's get back to it. Now at that width, it is full width of the box. The size has to be cut out. If you don't think it's tight, there we have the center line for the pan to go in. And it's just right up there to that edge and right up there to that edge. And we'll lay the pan in there. It has some holes, but I believe we can just find center line with it using those diamonds right there. We'll go ahead and put the screws in. Well, right there is that center line, but as you saw, we had the paper put down. It'll give me, if I get the camera to focus, you can see that gives us an idea of how well we are actually centered using that template. Now this model has in the instructions, it says short screws and that indicates there must be some long screws. So I found a few that are a little longer than the others, but it was like most of them are in fact the same size. Now here's a little tip. 
because if you look right here, I didn't take that edge off. I, I just came across with the front piece as it was. There's just a little bit, maybe about a eighth of an inch there. So it's going to pitch down. So what you may have to do, and you should have some of these if you've been putting cabinets in, you may have to shim the back up to get it level, and that's what we've done here. Okay, in the film edit that you just saw, we took this back out after we got our first three screws in so we could find using the template. So we took them back out, took the template off, took the blue tape off, and installed the pan back since we already had the holes located. Then we put the two bottom brackets on and it says make sure you have on this particular model those flanges pointing to the front and when you do that you will have in fact the holes line up in the right spot. This one has something similar flanges that go on the outside the screws then go in the middle. All right, so we got all the hard work done. The next question is, will it actually fit with that electrical outlet to where it is? And there's a cautionary tale in that. If you'll stay with me till right after this, we'll talk about what that actually is, and maybe you won't fall into it. Hey, appreciate you watching. Do me a favor, if you will, subscribe to the channel, either the YouTube or the Rumble channel, which this appears in. And if you can, check the notification bell or settings to make sure that you get notified when new videos are posted. Appreciate it. Well, now that that's out of the way, we're just about done. We just have to do that last little bit. There's only about two more video cuts to get that, two more steps to put that in. How did I get the receptacle where it is, and why is it there? Well, the short version is, you, if you've done a kitchen, you know you have to have two, two different uh, re receptacle circuits for your appliances, kitchen appliances, two appliance circuits they're called. And that's for your plug-in things like your coffee pots, your toaster ovens, your, your air fryers, that sort of thing, your, um, your whole nine yards, whatever you might want on your blenders, mixers, whatnot, two of those circuits. Now I could have used that and the first go around trying to keep the budget under control on this project was I'll just get a little 50 to $100 microwave, you know, I don't have a small one, you know, just to heat a cup of coffee, do something like that. I don't know if I feel like flexing, maybe a microwave dinner you know that sort of thing just it might be nice to have a little microwave up there but you know those little 700 watt units those little 50 to 100 dollar watt microwaves take about twice as long to heat something up as a 1500 watt microwave i don't know math so it was like well we'll just start with something small and it didn't take too long we're a little short on counter spaces so it's kind of an efficiency kitchen type thing maybe we'll do something better and it was suggested we go to a microwave shelf now microwave shelf if you're not familiar with the term cabinetry it's nothing special it's just a cabinet that has below it a microwave shelf to put a microwave on and uh, might as well pull a home run if we're going to go ahead and have that up above those circuits that were there anyway so i pulled a home run for it but at the same time we're looking at maximizing what we can in a small kitchen and it was told to us you know if we go to a 42 inch deep ca or long cabinet we can get another shelf up there above the microwave. Well, who wouldn't want another shelf above the microwave? The thing is, as we went up in wattage and up in size from a small to a medium, and we found out that a lot of the medium countertops actually had expressed notifications in their, their comments and in their, their paperwork that they were not suitable to put in a cabinet even on a shelf because they're, they're side, they have sh sides on them unless you have a lot of room and it breathes real good. Some of these units may have even had louvers down the side of the unit instead of in the back and on the bottom where they can be channeled to ventilate the heat out and you know make them work in a confined space. So the one I thought I was going to put in there was about 1.9 cubic foot. It was a tabletop model and I found out it wouldn't go on there and I'd go ahead and have to put in a built-in or a teeny one, one of those two, and it just doesn't make sense to have a teeny little microwave sitting on a, you know, a, a, a 24, 30 inch something in that neighborhood wide cabinet. So we, we went ahead and decided we're going to, budget's blown anyway, might as well go from a $100 microwave to a $600 built-in. And so we did that. That requires at least a 27-inch cabinet for a 24-inch microwave, as we've seen in the front part, because you have to have your trim kit go on it. So some of those will also still stay at 24 inches, but they'll go in a 30-inch cabinet. You just have a much wider piece of stainless or whatever color you have around the, the, the trim of that. So we end up having that. But in the process of doing that, I had the rough end already done and the box placed before we sheetrocked. Then I had to move the box for sheetrock because I didn't allow for th up to three inches uh, filler on the side where that up upper cabinet would open up. 
I'd get tore so it wouldn't bang too too hard against the wall. And so I had moved it left a few inches. And by the time I decided, I got to looking at it, the cabinet's 21 inches deep. Remember the rule of threes, 12 inch on the top standard, and we have 24s on the bottom. So to get that deep microwave, we needed three more, three more, three more, nine more inches onto our width. So we became 21 inches deep on the cabinet on the upper, a 42 by 21. And it looked like that would work. But as I got to studying before the, I ordered the cabinets, as the, the more it comes out at you for that microwave cabinet, the harder it is to get back up under there to your coffee pot because that's where it's going to be on that end is to the, to the right of the sink there where the water is. So it's going to be to the right of the sink and it gets a little bit more obscure. So I decided to go back to a 39 so that all of the cabinets, all the uppers would be 39 inches. Rule of three. So we went 42 to 39 and they're all that. So the cabinet is 39 uh, tall by 21 deep. And when we looked at the, at the built-in that we had worked so hard to find, the match with the trim kit, that actually had a matching trim kit for it so we could do a true built-in that was built for it, that we wouldn't have to fight with the manufacturer if it died, saying it wasn't vented right or wasn't installed in the proper location. I left that receptacle where you see it here, which now that you see it, looks about three inches low to get it tucked far enough up in that top corner. Now I thought where I had it was already gonna be high enough in there, and it did look like it would work. The one thing I overlooked, this is your cautionary tale, when I was looking at it, I was thinking the box dimensions of the microwave. I had forgotten the height of the rails. So I'm about halfway up toward that plug. So it's only that, that receptacle, it looks three inches low, could have been three inches higher, should have been three inches higher, didn't move it because the wall was already done and I'd have to cut out another big square patch. This time it'd be a big square patch to move it up because I've got a staple right above the the nail on box where it's in the wall because code says you got to have one so i couldn't access that staple to move it unless i cut a big hole and then had to patch a big hole and then i have to think about well i got cabinets covering that but i do need it to be f fairly straight up and down not to end up having to pitch that one cabinet differently than the rest of them off the wall so i believe it'll work you'll find out if it works if you'll stick around for a couple more video edits here they come Well, it's Christmas in July. Well, actually August because they couldn't get it here because of time to get a replacement shipped in. But there is our built-in microwave. And we do have a little bit of crunchiness in the back, although it's nothing like it was on the original one they delivered. If you're interested, I'll put it, I'll put some footage if I can still find it or some pictures or something on the tail end after we close. If you have any interest in that, I don't want to lengthen the the video for this but uh, we'll get it unpacked and get it installed well Houston we have a problem with this second GE microwave from Home Depot just got it in we're getting ready to put the rails on so we can mount it we flipped it over and I think my lapel my last mic will pick this sound up Oh well, maybe the third time's the charm. We're going to set it into place now that we have the rails on. And as you notice, you got the tapered ends toward the back and the flange ends toward the front where the door is. And as you can see from this particular design, since it's designed to be a built-in, we do pooch out in this area, but it's solid. And this is the area that was damaged in the previous one. We do have an air hole here, but we do have a, a gap here, significant gap plus the remaining distance to the, the wall. So we should be able to breathe just fine. Let's go set it into place. Now we're on the inside. If you'll notice that glass, it looks like it's molten red almost. That's, that's just clear, but it's coming off the light bulb. And you'll notice it's just about as wide as you can get. And we have actually depth in the back here, right to the back of the bump out. Now we see we look good all the way up under here. And then if you'll notice, there's a little neck and a little neck. Looks like it's been bumped in here on this one as well. Although it's not terribly bad, I guess we'll live with it. Well, I hate doing these 
front camera selfie things, but as you can see, we've got it in. It is complete. Uh, the trim ring is extra. Make sure you get a trim ring that fits your particular microwave so that they're paired up. Big deep microwave, nice one, it's on its own home run. Only thing hard about it is if you're putting it in a virgin cabinet and you got to cut it out, doing that without messing up your cabinet, doing it slow, doing it easy, do a good job, and you only have to do it once. That's it. Hope this helped. Hopefully you don't need three microwaves to get one that works. See you brothers, sisters, friends, neighbors, later. Mm -hmm.